this is Judy in Tuscany. Welcome to Dining with the Diva. Um, it's just almost six o'clock here now. So I figure, we have to figure out what time would be the best to do this. I just got a note from Australia and someone was saying, can't you do it at another time because uh, it's the wrong time for me. So we'll see, we're still practicing until we get, get real. Um, I was a pastry chef in a five-star hotel in San Francisco. I kind of worked my way up. I had been a, um, a cashier or waitress and I started doing pastry. And I was really inspired by one of the classes I took in San Francisco. I studied uh, a week of Viennese pastries at Top Marie's Cooking School. Hi, Robin. That's so nice of you to come all the time. Um, I took a week of pastry. Hi, Terry, my other pastry chef friend in California. Um, I took a week of uh, um, Viennese pastry at uh, Tom Marie's Cooking School with a woman called Diane Dexter, and she really inspired me because since 1972 I've been traveling. I, I, I love to go to Europe, and every pet, extra penny I got, I'd go to Europe. So uh, Diane Dexter was doing a thing. Hi, John. Sorrento. Oh, fabulous. I'm doing a takeoff on the Torta Caprese. Hola, Cristina, Mexico City. Um, so one of my favorite things, Kansas, yay, everybody's checking in. This is so nice, you guys. So um, uh, she had, Diane Dexter had done a thing that she was uh, traveling. She and her husband would go skiing like in the Austrian Alps or something. And she would, um, oh, look, Nikki, sweet peas. You must know what I have in my little jar over here. Look. It's pea season, sweet peas. <laughs> I'm just making some for Andrea. Um, she would go to Vienna in Austria, and they, Carondelet, oh my God, hi Sue. She would go to Austria. Her husband wrote, you know, my own little saying, like tacky paper, paperback novels you would buy like at Safeway at the grocery store. And so they would skill morning, and then in the afternoon, he would go and write his books, and she would go hang out with the ladies in the village and learn pastries, and then come home, he'd finish his book, they sell like, you know, 300,000 copies, and she'd travel around and teach cooking. And I thought, well, that's perfect. I could travel to Europe, learn things, and then come back. And, uh, and then, um, I thought, well, that was totally inspirational for me. So I told, I was at the hotel working, and I told the owner, Mr. Nasikas, Jim Nasikas, that I wanted to, to do pastry, and he said, fabulous, he gave me a job in the pastry shop. And at that time, Jim Dodge was the, the head pastry chef, so I was really, really lucky. It was mostly American-inspired um, American inspired pastries. Hi, Heather. Hi, Patrice. Uh, American-inspired pastries, but with some, some classic French. We do Napoleons and things like that. <clears throat> but when you work in the pastry shop, your, your shift, you would always be repetitive in doing whatever you were doing. So I worked the late night shift. <clears throat> so mostly, I did all the dessert service for the restaurant. Chow Howley, and um, but then I would prepare things for the mor for the next day for the morning. So I would be doing um, oh blueberry muffins and bran muffins and uh, a whole bunch of the cookies. We had a high tea and um, things were done in prep. So you would prep something, and then maybe the next person would actually be the person who made it, and then somebody else would finish it. Oh hi, how are you? One of my chocolate girls is here. I leave on Monday to do my chocolate tour again. And, <coughs> excuse me, hi Susan, and um, so anyway, so I went into pastry and I thought it was really fun, but then, and it, it was great, it was really fabulous, but I really still wanted to travel and I wasn't really making a lot of money being a pastry chef. Ciao Angela, ciao Karen, and, um, and so I decided that maybe I'd open my own thing, but I'd first I'd take a, uh, a last trip to Europe, so I bought a one-way ticket to Europe, <coughs> and I'd, I'd been several times, so I knew a lot of people. And mostly I went to France, and having worked in the hotel, I could have actually gone to a lot of places and worked. So um, I connected with La Varenne in Paris, um, I, in Lyon, I, Paul Bocuse, I could have gone and been present. I had a letter of introduction to everybody. In Lyon, and then I went to Nice, and I'd already attended Roger Verger's cooking school in the south of France at the Moulin de Mouchard, and that was really fabulous. And I had a friend in Monte Carlo, and my roommate at the time, Kathy, had told me, um, you really have to go to Italy. You'll love Italy and Italy will love you. And it ended up that in the trip, Kathy came with me and a friend of ours, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and, um, and our friend Louis. 
and we all came together, and it was really, really fun. <coughs> and um, so uh, we, I ended up in Florence and totally fell in love with Florence and uh, started a cooking school in 1988. I took like four years to actually, you know, learn the traditional recipes. So when I teach you something, I'm going to teach you the traditional recipes. And um, today we're going to do a recipe which actually I'm using an American version of it. Ciao, Merit, Norway, checking in. We're really international today, huh? Um, but there's a, a cake. One of the first jobs I got cooking in Italy, in Florence, was um, a pastry chef in a vegetarian restaurant. Um, when I came to Italy, I didn't speak Italian. I was American. I had no clue about Florentine cuisine. You know, I, there's a lot of things that don't exist here. There's no deep dish pizza. There's no spaghetti and meatballs. There's words that Italian Americans would use to describe something mean something totally different in Florence. So Italy really is a lot of regional cooking. So <coughs> I was going to show you. This is, um, I transferred, like, my cookbooks, my favorite recipes, you know, because you I couldn't carry books with me. Um, and there was no internet, right? So I had brought a notebook with me, and then I, for, to work, I transferred them. I would collect these little notebooks wherever I went. This one's an Italian one. Um, <coughs> this is one I got in Paris. And so as I went, I would just start, you know, here's some recipe cards I keep in their favorite recipes. Now there's some printouts. But these are mostly all covered in sugar and melted butter, and those are the best recipes, right? So my carrot cake. <clears throat> and there was one recipe that I would make at this, uh, it was called Centro Vegetariano, this vegetarian restaurant. And um, I had found it in a cooking magazine. Once I knew my Italian, <coughs> I, um, I could read cooking magazines. And it was a, a, a cake from Naples, and they called it, this is like back in 1985 or 86 or something, they just called it an almond cake. But what it really is is the torta caprese. And um, a caprese is not just a tomato and mozzarella salad, okay? So it's something that originates on the island of Capri, which is off the coast of Naples. Remember Capri pants? Hi, Francesca. <coughs> Excuse me, it's like a little allergy. All the olive trees and cypress trees are um, pollinating right now, and it's really windy, and so I am just dying, staying in the house dying. So anyway, this um, almond cake that was really, really beautiful, the one from Naples, um, the first recipe I got was that you actually ground the chocolate and ground the almonds. <coughs> and it's, um, and they had 50 grams of flour in there. But later I found out that it's actually supposed to be melted chocolate and almond flour, so it's a gluten-free cake. So I thought, well, that's fabulous. I really love that. So um, I'm going to do, there's another version. So if you're watching me, and if you're interested, I can send you a link to the recipe for the Torta Caprese Classic. I'm not going to make that today. I find it kind of um, heavy, and it's really chocolatey. Uh, it's really good in winter, and it's a good for breakfast buffets, for having breakfast buffets. It's just a great cake, but I thought I'd do something lighter because the lemons are here now. And we have the lemons from Sorrento are really, really beautiful. Naples, I mean, you know, lemoncello. It's so fabulous. So I have this recipe that we're going to do, which is totally gluten-free, and I'm going to do it lemony. So one of the versions I had once also had, instead of the dark chocolate in it, they had white chocolate. But again, I think white chocolate is really, really sweet. So I took it out, and the cake still works really well. Another cake that I really like, <coughs> do you guys remember The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? Did you see that? There's an orange cake in there that I really love, and it's um, cooked clementines. You boil them first, and then you puree them, <coughs> and you stir that into this gluten-free almond cake. So basically, this is that same cake, but I'm using lemon juice and lemon zest instead of um, ground up oranges. What I usually do is when oranges are in season, I just cut them up to you know, make sure there's no seeds. And I puree the oranges with equal weights of the sugar, and I just put it in Ziploc bags, and I keep it in the freezer. For something like this, I could just throw that in there. Um, I, don't even, I don't even cook them, because I, I like that little bitter that's there a little bit, and I think it's really, really nice. So today, we're going to make this almond, lemon almond cake. Good morning. Oh, Chicago. I love Chicago. <coughs> we're going to do this. So... This recipe has four 
large eggs, okay? And you want the eggs to be room temperature. Uh, the whites, if you have a copper bowl, the whites beat up better in a copper bowl, which I'm thinking about because I don't use any of those electric things. You know, my kitchen's really, really the tiniest kitchen in the world, like on a sailboat or something. And the yolks go in the glass there. <coughs> so um, we're going to do four eggs dividing the yolks from the whites. If you have a choice in life, like I said, room temperature eggs beat better. Uh, egg whites beat really well. Sometimes they tell you to put like cream of tartar or something into there. Um, the copper bowl is a chemical reaction, so it makes the, the egg whites beat up really nicely. One, two, three. I don't know, I'll show you too how orange, oops, that one just broke. These yolks are. <coughs> Corn. The chickens here eat corn, and so I think they're really, really, really sweet. Um, and I don't use vanilla, so most times I think chickens in America are fed dried, dead fish, and so they they add vanilla. You know, it makes the shell harder, so they won't break. Oh, the clementine cake, yeah. Is that good? So they make them the shells harder. These shells break really easy. So can you see? Probably not. I, I posted a picture before. So this is um, really orangey egg yolks. Thanks, you guys, for sharing. If you guys shared the video, too, that's really nice. Thank you, Laura. Um, so we're going to <clears throat> just mix the, the four egg yolks with a quarter cup of sugar. And I just do this with a whisk until they're... Um, all mixed up in a nice cake batter. So in the original recipe, there was a little bit of butter, so it would have been butter, sugar, and egg yolks like a regular cake. <clears throat> but I say, you know, if you don't need it, why? Why add it? Okay, so this just really needs to be kind of just so the sugar dissolves a little bit in the egg yolks. I don't really need to like triple this in volume or anything because we'll be really whipping the egg whites until they're soft feet to fold it in, and that's going to really help it. Okay. So, then, if you have, uh, well, you have electric beaters, I'm sure. Um, uh, if you whisk things and you have egg whites, copper bowl. This is one of the things I brought from America with me, Williams Sonoma, the best. One of the things that stayed. <coughs> and the bigger whisks. Um, I, I, a lot of my stuff's still in boxes. I closed my cooking school and it's still in boxes here. But I uh, usually have a rounder balloon whisk, but this is still really big. So you just start to uh, whisk, and I'm going to whisk this to soft peaks, and after it gets a little bit um, cloudy looking, I'll start slowly adding a quarter cup of sugar to this too, and that's going to give me this, you know, kind of clouds. And also, if you were going to make chocolate mousse, I kind of do the same thing. I would put melted chocolate with eggs and sugar, and then fold in the whites and no whipped cream, and that's chocolate mousse. And you let it set up in the refrigerator, and it's really beautiful. So if you're doing this right, it should hurt really bad right here. Um, and that's what the, um, the best tiramisu also, there's so many things that start with this base where the egg yolks and sugar are beaten up to a nice mousse, kind of like, I would beat those even more and I put the mascarpone in there. And then the egg whites are whipped to a soft peak and folded in. And that's what makes the tiramisu so beautiful in Italy is that it's, it's really a mousse, a mascarpone mousse. So I'm just seeing who's here. Hi, Heather and Susan. Thank you, Susan. How are you? I saw Susan. Did you just do Vietnamese food? It's fun. Like um, we were just talking on the the dining with the diva group, and what do you miss? You know. And sometimes I do need a good stir fry. Now I can get ginger, and at the Central Market in Florence, we can get a lot of uh, foreign ingredients now. So it's not so bad anymore. You can kind of fake everything. So this really won't take too long. Um, it would be faster, like I said, for you with an electric beater. But really it is better when the eggs cream beats better when it's cold. And egg whites beat better when they're room temperature. So already, I don't know if you can see. Okay. So just take, I'm going to start slowly now adding in, now that it's kind of moussey-like. 
I know there's a quarter cup of sugar, and I'll just add like a tablespoon at a time. And this is like how you also make a meringue. Hi, Carrie. Oh, yeah, the tiramisu. Is that the best tiramisu? The best eggs? And they're the raw, they're raw eggs in tiramisu, too, so <clears throat> that's another thing you have to be careful about in America. Um, eggs often have uh, salmonella, so you have to be careful. How far from Florence am I, Nick? Um, I'm between Florence and Siena. It takes me an hour to get there. It's about 30 kilometers. Um, it's an hour on the train, an hour to drive. But I lived downtown Florence for 20 years, and now I'm out in the countryside. So, but I'm, I'm in a village. I live outside the village, so I still have to drive. But um, there's a train to get to Florence, so it's really easy. Yeah, copper bowl. I, even if I just did this for egg whites, it's it's the best tool of my whole life. Well, because I do so much pastry. And I do like mousses. And even any kind of a savory souffle that you're folding the egg whites in. And it just makes it happen faster without having to add, some people add other things, that chemical kind of, um, what's it called? I can't remember. There's something people add to make your egg whites. But, but you should just watch when things go on sale. The <coughs> cock often goes on sale. So now, by adding the sugar to this too, it's starting to get shiny. This would also be like marshmallows, right? Fio Matteo Palmieri. You talking about where I used to live, Nikki Poo Poo? Right around the corner. Yeah, that street has changed so much. And my first place where I lived with Andrea was on uh, Via Ghibellina. And around the corner of <coughs> Via Matteo Palmieri. And then I moved to the, in front of the Central Market, which was heaven for me. So I'm just going to let this sit for a minute. This is almost there. And we'll take this now and get ready to add the solid ingredients, our almond flour. We're going to add lemon zest and lemon juice. Yeah, Nick, you know you gave me the best picture of that, um, the fresco in the back bedroom. I had never taken a picture of it, so the one I have is from you when you came to visit. Oh, I don't know if she said this online, but um, Nick, um, Elspeth just died. That was very sad. One of uh, our European exchange workers, um, Kathy, just wrote to me this morning that she just passed away, so that was very sad. Hi, Terry. Oh, good. Yeah, we, it's beautiful today. It's not being so windy here. So this is going to get a cup and a half of, of this is ground almond flour. Can you guys see this? I know King Arthur uh, sells this. Um... It's ground almond flour. <clears throat> I used to grind my own. I have a you know, Swedish nut grinder. Um, if you do it in your food processor, it gets a little chunkier. <clears throat> but you can buy this now. It's very easy to find. So just um, a cup and a half. It's a fourth. So I'm going to talk through those. One, two. Oops, that's a little bit much. We don't want too much or get too heavy. There. <clears throat> okay. And then... A little bit of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking powder. It's funny, they sell us our baking powder in these little envelopes, and they're um, vanilla scented. So if you want to make an Italian cry, find Italian baking powder. <coughs> they don't have real vanilla. <coughs> well, they do now, but it's very expensive. So you just want to blend that in. It gets mixed up nicely. And I forgot a pinch of salt. Excuse me, I'm going to get my salt right here. Salt is always good in sweets. I think it's like one of the, the secrets, okay? Always put salt in your sweets. And then this just gets mixed up, and it gets really nice and thick, as you can imagine. It's got a lot of almond flour. And I've seen a lot of recipes that have, well, like I said, like the, the melted white chocolate or the dark chocolate would be the torta caprese, the normal one. Um, some people maybe add milk and make it more like a normal cake. But what I'm going to do is add lemon. So, did I bring my lemon? I have my zester. Let me go get a lemon. <clears throat> so, this is a uh, big, beautiful lemon, actually from down in Sorrento, the Amalfi Coast, which is really nice. So I want the zest. I'll just zest this right in there. So 
Oh, it smells so good. Be sure you get organic or be sure to wash it really well because you're eating this, remember. They, they spray them a lot and they also like wax things sometimes <coughs> to make them shiny and pretty. I buy organic. I still rinse them off anyway, but you'll have to be as careful. And you want to get just the yellow zest and not the white bitter part. Okay. And then, of course, your, all products are different, so you can make it more or less lemony, depending how you like. <clears throat> this smells like lemon meringue pie right now. Okay. We have all of our lemon zest. And now I'm going to put the juice in. So first I'm going to roll on it to make sure it gets all nice and soft. That's another thing. Um, not in the refrigerator. Lemons in the refrigerator. That makes them really hard and firm. <coughs> another thing, out room temperature. Okay, let me just cut this. And our lemons have seeds. The lemons still have seeds in America, you guys? So I'm going to put my hand, this is my filter, I'm going to put my hand underneath, fingers closed, and squeeze all the lemon juice in. I like it to be nice and lemony, so I'm going to use the whole lemon. And these are really strong lemons, they're really lemony, so it's really, really nice. And then I'm just going to keep the seeds in my hand. Okay, the rest of it. You could put these in a little cheesecloth when you squeeze them. We used to do that for tea service at the hotel cut the piece of the lemon and wrap them in cheesecloth just to make sure that they uh, they didn't get any uh, seeds in anyone's tea. Okay, so I'm going to use this now to kind of loosen this up a little bit. Okay, so this kind of helps make it a little softer. That was a nice kind of firm blob of almond paste. I'm sure there's also a lot of cake recipes using almond paste for this instead of almond flour, but I like to be able to um, control the sugar. This isn't really very much sugar at all for this cake goes in an eight inch pan, okay? So now I'm going to finish whisking these up. I'll just take another minute here. It's nice and shiny. What I like to do is just take one third and I'm going to um, add that and stir that in first, okay? And that again will lighten this up. So you want to, I like to turn the bowl and kind of fold. You, the whole thing about whipping the egg whites is so that you keep the air in there. So you don't want to beat it to death so the eggs, the egg, the egg whites lose their air. So that's nice and lightened right now. Whip this a little more. Okay, second part. I just love marshmallows and egg whites. Oh, ciao, Felipe. Ciao, very grazie. Don't we say? Don't we say adesso cucinare? <coughs> You know, I worked with Dario the butcher, and this is one of the, the butchers that did an apprenticeship with Dario, Felipe Branco. In Toronto, Canada. I love Toronto. How nice. They have the San Lorenzo Market, right? It's a lot of nice food in Toronto. Okay, and then we're going to uh, get rid of the whisk and put the rest of this in. Before I put that in, I'm just going to prepare my pan. Instead of buttering the pan and flouring it, I'm going to do a little olive oil and then sugar. Like two tablespoons of sugar. So I'm going to rub it just around. Make sure I get all the edges here. And the bottom's really well covered. And then I'm going to put like two tablespoons of sugar in and go stand over the sink. And um, I can even do this to show you. 
spin it, and then any excess sugar, might need a little more, will, um, will fall out into the sink or your dessert. You just want to dust it like you would flour. So, you know, it's a gluten-free dessert, so you want to be sure you keep it gluten-free. So this is lovely, nice little, it's kind of bright light right there, sugar coating on there. Now I'm just going to finish this. So now I'm just lightly folding. <clears throat> and you just want to make sure that there's no more white lines of the um, egg whites left. Make sure everything on the bottom is mixed in. That's it. That's perfect. So I'm just going to go now and pour it right into the pan. Scrape everything out. This doesn't really rise very much, even though I put a little... Did I put the baking powder in there? I think so. I don't remember. It doesn't really need it for the egg whites, but if I did... <clears throat> it doesn't rise a lot, and it sinks down a little bit after it comes out of the oven. Okay. This takes uh, half an hour in the oven. And then, just like TV now, I... Uh, oh, ciao, Terry. So this takes half an hour. I'm going to show you the one I did this morning. I'm, <coughs> excuse me. I'm leaving for a week to go to um, uh, run a chocolate program. I work with Ecole Chocolat, and I do a um, help them with their master chocolate program. So I'm leaving Monday for Torino. That'll be fun. So this is. I made this one in a uh, in a square pan. Okay. <coughs> I just think sometimes it's easier to cut like this because then I would like cut it in half and cut each half in half for portioning things like for parties and stuff. Then cut it in half again the other way, just turn that and then in half again. So this is a 8 by 8 glass pan. One of my friends, Kathy, did a uh, 8 by 8 cookbook, which is really cute. Everything to be made in an 8 by 8 pan, which is really sweet. Terry, are you already in England? Huh? So this is the um, the cake. It's a beautiful little pound cake kind of thing, but it's uh, very light, and it's even uh, better the next day. Ciao, Mirko. So this is really beautiful. This would be nice. <coughs> Serve with some fresh fruit, or even a little whipped cream, like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, whipped cream. But I just eat it all by itself. Okay? I think it's fabulous. So, that's our our kind of take on a Napolitano cake. Let me put my glasses on so I can read now. Until the reads probably more. Yeah, it's gluten free. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. another thing I want to tell you, in case you don't know if you're just finding me for the first time, I started a Facebook group called Dining with the Diva. <clears throat> you just ask to join and we'll let you join. And what I'm going to do today as a special uh, treat, I want to try doing some of these. For the people that follow me in the special group, I'm going to do a, a private Facebook Live to the group just after this one. And today at the market, we got zucchini blossoms. So we're going to be doing fried zucchini blossoms in about 10 minutes. So if anybody wants to sign up, come to the uh, Dining with the Diva site. And we'll see you there. Thank you so much for stopping by. Remember, this will all be on YouTube afterwards, okay? Ciao, ciao, Karen. Mother's Day, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Swordfish, mmm. Yeah, Andrea's waiting for me to do that pasta sauce with the leftover swordfish. He hasn't been feeling very good, so he hasn't had that. Did you see the rice I did for him for lunch today with the uh, egg broken in it? It was so good, egg and Parmesan cheese. Ciao, you guys, thank you very much.